What's up, everybody? Uh, this is Rob Wallace. Live in the dungeon. Um, Represent Grove Studios. This is Grove Sessions. Um, we're going to listen to some music from me and from some of my friends. Um, and then we're going to try to make something live before we get a chance to talk. So let's get into it. You're a dirty old man, you know what I mean? <laughs> And I'm going to be one till I'm a dead old man. <laughs> You're a dirty old man. You know? That's what I'm saying. Where's the boy, String? Where's Wallace? That's what I want to know. Where the fuck is Wallace? Huh? Look at me. Look at me. Where the fuck is Wallace? Huh? <laughs> Now nah, it's just a game of who should take the blame when really just shame. Our page ain't the same. And when we cross paths, it's like a bloodbath. What happened to better halves? Instead, it's just wrath. And that was haunting me and alarming me that the keys to our heart ain't in harmony. So you push me away, question if you should stay. Now I'm crying to say, is everything okay? Okay, 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 okay. When both of our souls align I'll do what it takes to heal my soulmate Bend all of the rules to mend all of the wounds Take it to a shrink, examine how we think Explore each other's thoughts, restore each other's hearts Let's do the work so we can make it work Cause you scared me with the thoughts that we better off apart I remember the vows, remember every letter Make you my forever, my promise to make you better 
In any weather, any season, any measure, any moment with you is a jewel I can treasure. So cherish the day, believe what I say. In my arms, you will feel no harm. Everything's okay. 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 Love changes, a thug changes above brains is the heart with you, you say your name with anguish and joy. Shameless to coy, something changes with a ring, no more games to employ. I don't know about you, but I came to enjoy. I ain't here to go insane and leave my pain to my boy. I come to wonder if and why you shifting eyes and sift through lies. When you drift, it dies. I don't worry about lifting Kai or Tiffin tie and test the difference between the gift and the prize. In the world, I'm quite talented, a gifted guy. Only you invert my logic like shifted eye. For you, I lift the sky and least whips that's fly. It might sound like sucker shit if you ain't split that pie. Okay, I'll do better. Okay, let's suck room cheddar. Move clever. Assume never. In tune together. Uh. Yeah, but be careful as a woman. And what you demand on that. I demand that he be a man. Yeah, just, but you can't say, you, the but you provision can't, part. Yeah, but you can't say you demand it. You have to, you have to suggest it. Well, that, that's your <laughs> ego that says that. No, I, I demand it. Now, you deal with that. All right. Okay. I I'll even, I'll even, I'll even, I'll even I go with that. I demand that you be a man. And I don't think that that's asking too much. Mm -hmm. That provides mm -hmm. things. I need a man. I want to say peace. Peace to double negative people. Dirty old men. All the MCs and artists in Detroit, hold your head. Stay positive. You know what I'm saying? The music is saving us. Strip club dances, uh, just the man in me, colder than antifreeze, hotter than hybrid rocks, got projects to drop. Don't let the smooth taste fool ya. Head fake cross over two points for ya. This is ski mass wrapped in the lost battle. No shit left out in the cold. Trying so hard to generate substance. Writing with gall and a little bit of gum. God body. I, I've been through a whole lot when I was younger. I used to box and duck cops. I told us over the head that I would knock him out of socks. Nigga jump bad, bust his head with a rock. 
soul survivor, Lord last rider. You say the word, I like that ass on fire, cause I'm hardwired. God body inspired, truck tires, treadmill and pump iron, cease fire, yellow tape and gun shells. Keep quiet or do the tweets, no thumbnails. He stupid, bell bonds to pay bail. What you think now? That cold D won't go tell unexplainable shit when I'm serving it quick. Got no time for bullshit, need to learn that quick. I'm just passing by with my eye on the prize. Nighttime creature, the sunset, the sunrise. Why right, grilling me, Duke? That shit ain't cute. He got something to say. Go ahead and make my day. Hey, I do it my way. Like blue, I say it. I'm never holding it in and get the shit off my chest. It's not hit to impress. I'll impress myself. That's how I'm acting in the walking when I'm chasing the pills. Nothing hard to feel shit. I spit the shit from the gut. Nigga, more on one. Check out my George Jefferson strut. It is what it is. I guess this shit like a gift. We're all through these haters and all through these bitch, nigga. Uh, we looking all through the people talking shit, flapping lip. It's cool. We your school, a different model. We was built from. Back in the day, for real, I wanted to kill some. But every time I look at my son, I tend to chill, cuz I was raised around alcoholics and crack addicts. Call jackets, purse snatches, and black medics. Then I let a load of a clip and let a nigga have it. Then he got a dish of gun that's kind of automatic. We started out in classes, and now we go savage. Two parents in the household, somehow we still bastards. Somehow we go madness, then we can do this madness. To be honest, my conscience is off its axis. I'm off center the nights with no dinner to gun does. Remember my I'm start to panic, her mind running frantic, think her son is a son cause I'm out with my niggas and some of us is packing. We fight a nigga first, always down for the action. I swear on the girl, y'all niggas will get slapped with. We on the road, all traction for bread, nigga. Got some dead niggas, time for some action. Just like Cypress, who knows I might just. Hill a killer, man, I send doggy type tough. To be real, y'all don't really want this bad shit. Be mug DJs and rappers get the ass kicked. Around here, we look at y'all on some stuff. My third eye radical, identifying your husbands And never could be, staring y'all to push me You veterans, y'all niggas broke this pussy yeah. Shout out to Vietnam, Nat Black Rose Studios, Ipsy Yeah Dirty 30, Project Plug-In, all that just a regular guy. I put my suits in the closet that a skeleton's cry. Don't ever ask the melanin why, cause I don't answer bird niggas. Fly, pelican, fly. Keep the smoke like I'm holding cigars. Me, I'm X. I got them flipping over these bars. The whole crowd oohs and ahs. Not knowing how bad you hurt it that you smell through the scars. Black man, I've laced it. I'm one with the vibe. I'm on a quest for love and I come with a tribe. Thumb in the drive. And I'm thumbing the ride on my way to Motor City. Yep, I'm coming inside. Bring back classics, bring back thriller. I miss Aretha, long live Dilla. Why these albums got all these fillers? Don't front, I know you feel us. You can catch me riding down Sunset, not the boulevard. Cause the sun sets anywhere I pull up, y'all. Squad is true, I do. Keep the wedding ring. You gotta stand for something, I fall for everything. I miss content, I miss subjects. We remember abuse, but forget substance. Facts. I love you all, but right now I'm talking to blacks. Oh, let me get back to what I do. We can never lose. Keep on fighting soldier, even as you get closer. Everybody sees, everybody sees, everybody needs, everybody needs. You got something everybody needs. People need things. We start to feel this strength and 
Thanks for rocking with me. WrestleMania at the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. It's a day that I'm certain rocking. my Shout guest at this Pontiac time will not forget. Nothing Dipsy, means Detroit. nothing. Nothing means all nothing. What do you mean by that? I'm talking about all the way to the top. Yeah. Unjustifiably in a position that I'd rather not be in. But the queen rise to the top. Oh, yeah. Double yeah. Oh, 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 
Check out that East Grand on streaming platform for Dirty Old Man. Me and everybody. Let's go. You better be glad I'm a man of peace. Cause they be talking slick to a pan of grease. I should bust your lip over handily. Got body back like we just changed the battery. New plan of attack because we did crack the masterpiece. And that's bad news for any crew that's coming after we. Told y'all dudes, don't snooze it. You can rest in peace. Cause sleep is the cousin of death. That's a casualty. Told y'all quiet is kept. But it's secret. They consider best. The rest they say decent. Anybody that's next got to step inside the ring with mental I suplex straight into the chicken wing. To show y'all, I mean like Gene, gorilla like my soon, you know what I mean? Tsunami, a typhoon, I draw like high noon, get the picture? Salute my style, behind these balls, just visit. Man, listen, I'm going all, oh, you missed it. Rewind and revisit. He's lying in the song that I'm kicking as my mind is disgusting. I black out, step back, then back out. Never back down, let go, I know to act out. The dirty old logic, substance over profit. Run when I cock it, zigzag when I pop it. Flint time product, you know we don't do gossip. It's a Grove as my cockpit. Drove through the toxic, slightly blow, but I got it. From niggas to god shit. Mental wide box shit. Arms too short to box shit. Me, I'm also very Allen talented with box shit. Beat it to the boxes. Two super predators. We be on some rock shit. Spinning in the swamp shit. Straight up out of box shit. Spitting on some box shit. Surging better rock shit. Listrum cops lost shit. I put you up on all shit. Put we're back in Congress all the way to Lippin' Cot shit. Dork court new pond shit. Jack and Saganah shit. This is how you rock it. Twomp, twomp. Yeah, we got it. What's in the name of the name of the sound, the sound. Missing dad, you niggas hella mad. Be glad the corn ain't here to zip up the bag. Cause when it's real, ain't no bitch in my talk. No switch in my walk. Your silhouette, what they sketching in chalk. Cause it's feels from the 313. This is what I bring you. It's not like a little bit of I make a single. Just that sacrificial pad and pencil. Rap instrumental. Pass the end of slap your dad and tingle out the window. Sega Genesis, it's your favorite lyricist. Prince Poet blowing rhymes like I play instruments. Rip the mic like a ukulele. Bouncing like bows on ladies. On the mic, your crew suck like you want baby. Pacify you, all you rappers liars Acting like you crack some flyers But you're flat like I slash your tires I'm from the old school grabbing pliers The switch channels Light up the stage like big candles Kick a sweet 16 like B.B. King Or Bruce or Kareem Fighting on your TV screen
scream Just the game of death Into the dragon Watch I flame your chest Leaving the breeze Melt the sleeves off Your Ava Rex Bomber jacket I'm presidential Like Obama's blackness Word of mama Can't we drop the castles Hey yo the guard of this rap shit Trapping no trap shit I'm fighting all my life So I write like stiff jab Shit's crazy Get left like hook Without the captain Pete Paul by Robin Peter While the camera's panning Wait got it and get it Rob Peter to pay Paul Peter Pan Captain Hook Yo what I say dog Left hook Right jab Rewind play pause Think about it Look at your man Nigga praise God They call me God Almighty Like Jesus Christ He's nice I just smile and be like You all ready I apply the lean Styrofoam in the Sprite You get popped like a pill Perp 30 in the Vikes The sour It got me high in the flights I'm looking down And these cowards Not living life Like damn Go ahead and tight Behind the keyboard These niggas you fraud And barely hard We get it cracking Nigga we laughing Like hardy hard So what's happening That's me that's not 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 I'm from a spot where the quick fix sales When niggas get hit with shells They make their heart beat like twelves I keep some young killers nigga on the prepaid sale They get a call, next thing you eating breakfast in hell We out here and on the grind just trying to shine the most Where disputes over bread always lead to toast I put the pressure on a nigga, make him flee his coast To go to sleep at night with the heat of tuck close Niggas think threats a joke to you taking their kids Duck tape and send their ass flying over a bridge So how you want it? It's ice picks of ice grips Ice brass knuckles or pillowcases Pipe fits. I'm nice shit. I do this thing for life shit. Take a few off and come back just like night shit. I might shit on your favorite rapper, a Picasso with them. At 38, I paint your rafters. You niggas know what I'm chasing after. Floor to ceiling windows, all straight to alabaster. When I first looked at it, I, I was looking at the base and I was trying to figure out what this was made of. And this is made of different alabaster face. It's the first single uh, off East Grand. Um, my album, I had the pleasure of um, executive producing. Also get an amazing, um, amazing detail. Performing on, along with my brothers. We brought everybody to Detroit. Everybody came to Detroit last summer. And we recorded an album, uh, bought a bunch of records, made a bunch of music. So um, we're going to switch gears real quick. I'm gonna get into uh we're gonna work on um we're gonna we're gonna show something that um my brother Gadget is involved in. Shout out to Gadget DMV. Um shout out to phonics.com. Um we're gonna dig into this this beat, this sample kit that he got. And see if we can knock on something real quick. And mind you, everybody use machine different. I'm a person that do my chopping the machine. And uh, I primarily actually produce my beats in um, Logic. So what I'm going to do is let me see if I can pull up the chat. Thanks for, for rocking with me. Um, oh, 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 we got a little bit of an echo. Hold on. Let me see what I can find here. See if we can find something to work with. So this is Gospel Stems. That's phonics.com. P-H-O-N-I-Q-S dot com. Um, see if we can find something to rock with right quick. Just picking some random, seeing if we can figure it, make some make some happen. See what you got, gadget. Oh, that's it. Oh, let's see. Uh oh. I lost all of y'all. Technical difficulties. Four minutes. 
One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. All right, we back good. Okay. You can hear the when I fit. It's my fault. We're just going to take a little small piece of this and show. See what we can make this do. Thanks for sticking with me through my struggles. Sounded like Teddy Riley last night for a minute, too. My bad. I like that right there. By the way, I didn't drop a uh, disclaimer on the video or whatever. All the music that I play belongs to me. It was made by me or it was made by my team. Shout out to the dirty old men and double negative people. So all rights reserved. Save us some time. All right. Make a quick adjustment. Switch views real quick. Um, let's do, let's put you. 
over here. All right, let's see what we can find here. Make sure my top's clean first. trying to catch y'all see if y'all got any comments or anything like that see if it's any comments um i think let me try to jump into this oh, not what i wanted to do All right, peace. Uh, shouts out to Buff One. Thanks for coming through. I saw you real quick before I went back to it. I guess I got to pull my joint back up. Hold on one second, people. All right, word up. Leave me a comment if you dare. Let's see what we can do here. there just so we can get our feet up under us. Twenty minutes left on the clock. 
This is the Dirty 30. We got a Dirty 30 competition coming up in a couple weeks. We're going to announce today. Um, while we at it, I'm just going to throw some quick drums out here. Without editing. Under normal circumstances, I would uh, tune my kicks.
So what I like to do is kind of get a feel for what the beat is giving me. And then uh, I go from there. Um, you know what I'm saying? I might go bass line next. And all the sounds are completely able to be changed at any time. So, you know what I'm saying? I'd be the first to admit I'm not a great keyboard player, but I know how the equipment work and I know what I like. So that's what's most important. So you just you can kind of tell how easy it is to just kind of get it in and just see what happens. Um, I don't get a chance to make a lot of beats these days. I'm more involved in the mixing element of things, but um, machine makes it easier. And get that tape in real quick. You know what I'm saying? So now that I have, now it's all about, I got a, a, a basic. Well, the funny thing about it is the pattern that I usually make first doesn't end up being, it doesn't usually end up being the main part or whatnot of the song. Um, so let's see what else this, this sample can kind of offer us. I'm gonna turn my mic down so I can hear.
again, shout out to Gadget. Um, phonics.com, P-H-O-N-I-Q-S. They got the grimy stems on there. They got uh, gospel stems, the Luke K stems, all kinds of stuff to just, you know, assist you. Typically, like uh, if you was paying attention, you saw I got my turntable. Um, I sample a lot of wax, um, but wave stems are always a good thing. Yeah. One second. Let's see what else we got here. Come on. Let's move you back to the front. Peace. Uh, Peace, Jamilski. I see you on there. Um, look for the rest of the fellas so we can get it popping. Um, let's see. So yeah, um, that's, that's principally what it is. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of different ways, a lot of different methods to make beats. Um, it's a good thing to do while you're on quarantine. Um, you can be as creative as you need to be. It does take time, but it does teach you a lot of different things at the same time. Um, it's just kind of what we do. Shout outs to uh, Jamal Buffett, Washington County, my brother's keeper, Formula 734. Um, yeah. Shout outs to everybody. Can you hear me, Rick? Yeah, I can. Hey, thanks, Rod. Really appreciate that set, man. It was, uh, it was cool to watch you work through that process. Uh, for anybody that's just joining us, this is Rod Wallace. Uh, I'm going to be talking to him for a little bit today, but hope you enjoyed that beat set. Hope you enjoyed uh, seeing his workflow and creative process. Um, for those of you that just might be joining us, uh, my name is Rick Coglin. I'm one of the co-founders of Grove Studios and the CEO. And I always like to start out just telling you a little bit about Grove Studios and what we do. Um, obviously, we've been hosting some different artists in here, and today we have a very special episode uh, because Rod is actually a part of our team, but we really started Grove Studios to help people make music because we believe that music makes the world a better place. And we are working on a concept for building studio spaces out of shipping containers. We're in the design phase right now. And we're gonna be uh, moving forward on that project real soon. And we're gonna be updating everybody to our progress as that those things go along. But we started this Grove Sessions recently, uh, partially it, it was something we always wanted to do, but we also saw that uh, as gigging musicians, uh, producers, engineers, uh, so many people in the music community uh, have been affected by this shutdown. And we thought this was a great time to showcase and highlight some of the work being done behind the scenes. Things that might not always be obvious uh, as a music fan. And so we wanted to start this series for that reason and to really uh, try to support our, our, our local artists and our community. Um, today, we have a donation link up. Uh, Rod is sharing uh, the, the, any of the donations that come through with the Ypsilanti Meals on Wheels. So uh, if you are enjoying today's programming, please uh, consider clicking on that link and donating because uh, a good portion of that will be going to Ypsilanti Meals on Wheels. And we know that organization could use additional support right now, especially so. 
you know, these are unprecedented times, but uh, we think that with the community effort, we can we can get through it together and support each other. So, uh, Rod, thanks for being here today. I uh, also have Eric Friebel. He is another one of the co-founders of Grow Studios. He's the director of community engagement and a drummer with the Day Nights. Uh, and I also have Max here. Max Price is the head of social media at Grove Studios. And he's also a producer, rapper, and entrepreneur. And I'm really proud of the team as always, because while we're building this studio space, uh, we're, all, we're all musicians. I'm a guitar player in the Day Nights and, and Gold Bloom and, and uh, other projects myself. So we built this uh, for musicians, by musicians. And now we have a podcast studio that we're looking forward to getting back into in person, uh, hopefully in just another few weeks. But we're kicking it off here. Um, Eric, did you want to say anything before I get into uh, Rod's full introduction? Oh, yeah. Hey, how's it going? I'm um, glad to be joining everybody today. Um, I think I was just um, really wanting people to understand that, you know, there are so many creatives, music creatives, uh, gig economy people, they're out of work right now due to the canceled events, closed venues, you know, projects put on hold. Um, so, you know, like Rick said, we're just doing our best to uh, help support artists supp supplement their livelihoods right now. So um, if you see anything, hear anything during Grove Sessions that moves you, makes your day a little bit brighter, please feel free to give a donation based on your means, you know, so that we can keep doing the work that we're doing and so that artists have a little bit to put in their, mu in their pockets. Um, otherwise, just thanks for joining us today, Rod. Happy to have you. Great. Uh, My pleasure. So we're gonna go ahead. And, um, so this is very, this is a special uh, live stream interview with Rod Wallace, producer, hip hop evangelist, artist, evangelist, and evangelist, and ded <laughs> dedicated educator. Uh, Rod Wallace is not only all of these things, but he also happens to be uh, Grove Studio, one of Grove Studios um, uh, board of advice. He's on the board of advisors. Mm -hmm. uh, he's leading the way uh, in our educational programming and outreach um, that we're engaging in. More information about that later. We'll get into it. Uh, Rod was born in Flint, Michigan, attended Flint High, uh, Central High School. Uh, he's a graduate and current doctoral candidate um, at, and a director of Upward Bound at Eastern Michigan University, where he studied both history and African-American studies. He's served as a classroom teacher and administrator, mentoring thousands of inner city youth. He's uh, a mentor to many, uh, including myself. I, I lean on him for some, some advice and, uh, and, and obviously Grove Studios uh, as well. He's, he's a highly uh, respected member of many communities here in Southeast Michigan, and we're just really fortunate to have him on today. Um, just out of the gate, Rod, I really, let's talk about that, that set that you just played. Um, I, you know, tell us a little bit about the music that you featured and maybe a little bit about those artists and your connection to those artists. Okay. Um, so I, I'm principally a, a sample based hip hop producer. Um, my skill set at this point primarily is involving engineering, however. So I get an opportunity to work um, with other producers in terms of really helping to craft a sound and develop a sound um, as well as record. Um, so through the mixing and mastering process, um, I'm able to really to um, support producers in, in making, getting them to a, a different level. Um, I do a lot of freelance mastering. Um, but for me, I've always been a fan of sample based hip hop. I'm a fan of many different types of music, but sample based hip hop is kind of where uh, my soul is. And that's a lot of what my own sound is about. But um, being working with um, artists in Ypsilanti, such as the Day Nights, um, has given me an opportunity to kind of expand um, my palette, to, so to speak, and expand the, the sounds that I have a chance to grab onto. So um, I'm just looking forward to bigger and better things. That's dope. Uh, when did you like first start, you know, making music and getting into hip hop? Can you tell us uh, the origin story of Young Rod? 
shout outs to um, DJ Infamous in Nashville. Um, I mean, if we really want to go back, my next door neighbor growing up in Flint, um, the first, one of my first hip hop memories was him playing uh, New York, New York, Big City of Dreams back in like, I don't even remember who made it, but it was like 82, 83. Um, playing it and me hearing it out the window of my house and really getting engaged in it. And so hip hop has really been around my entire life. Um, as I grew into, a t I used to love to read um, and hip hop was always a very literal type of music to listen to. Um, and I understood and adhered to kind of the ideas that were being presented. And I was able to make a distinction between what was stuff I wanted to do and what was stuff I didn't want to do. So, you know, started making tapes in the, in the mid eighties. I had like the karaoke, um, the karaoke box from Perry drugs to recording at DJ infamous house, um, in, in Flint, South side of Flint. He's since moved to Nashville and been DJing down there for decades now. Um, but he, you know, we hang the mic from the ceiling tiles and, you know, make records or whatever over instrumentals to going to college and getting engaged with people like Greg Bass and uh, Plea um, and, you know, working with, with artists up there at WQBR um, to producing my own album with um, a, a Ypsilanti cat named Calvin Miller back in the late 90s. He really kind of showed me, taught me how to mix using an analog board um, and technology was really just starting to take a turn. So, um, after I started teaching, I went to recordings to the Detroit, met up with Mike Mosley, created Double Negative People, um, started doing digital mixing, um, and then continued being a teacher and um, really developing um, a, a love for what mixing and engineering and, and recording did for me personally. So I put it in my classroom and then over time developed my own, you know, studio or develop my own equipment and this, that, and the third and um, just continue to keep it going all the way up until now. Yeah, I love that. I, I love that, you know, even while you're doing all this, the music stuff, it, it never was like separated from from who you are as a pro professional. You both brought both of those professional things into your life and 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 uh, and mixed and matched the two, so to speak. Right. Um, right. You know, we both share that background as educators and, and, and administrators in, in public schools. And um, I know you're doing some different things now, but you're still connected mm -hmm. to that world through the Upward Brown program. Um, and so though things have changed, right? You're not in the classroom anymore. I'm not mm -hmm. in the classroom anymore, but we're still working with public schools. Um, how, how does that experience over the years, you know, shaped like both being involved in, in education mm -hmm. and, the music, uh, you know, the, the hip hop uh, culture and the music business, how has that experience of, you know, education kind of shaped your approach to the, the, the business side, the music side, or, or and vice versa? How's, how's the hip hop and, and music business shaped your approach um, to education? Education has taught me about how, you know, one thing that was always important to me was the creative impulses of the kids who I worked with. So being in Mr. Wallace's class meant that we were creating raps about um, about ancient American civilizations. It meant that we were listening to Jay Dilla instrumentals just quiet enough to you had to be it had to be pin drop silent in the classroom for you to hear it while we're working independently. It meant that we were making up songs for the meat and performing them at the meat pep rally being in Mr. Wallace's class. Um, so we talked, we frequently talked about, um, I was a social studies teacher. So we talked about things involving history and government and economics and looked at it through a hip hop lens because that was the cultural um, identification that the kids had through. So I it would be stupid of me working with kids who are a part of the hip hop generation or who view hip hop as being a dominant cultural element of their life. It would be stupid of me not to try to interest them in what Alexander Hamilton was doing, you know, with, it would be stupid for me not to use hip hop and doing that. So saying all that to say, as a teacher, it worked naturally. Um, as an administrator, I think that what it did, being an administrator teaches you about thinking strategically. And for me, um, it really helped me to understand what I wanted and what I didn't want. When I first became an administrator, I stopped making music. 
because I said, you know, making music professionally or whatever is not what I want anymore. So I'm not, I'm not going to be able to dedicate the attention to it. So as time went on, um, I ended up coming back to it because I needed a creative, um, I needed a creative outlet because being an urban educator, being an educator period is highly stressful. So I needed something that was removed. And once I started to do it, it felt good to me and I wanted it to be back a part of what I did. So I ended up um, going to a high school that had a burgeoning and music production program. It really helped to craft and shape what that looked like. Um, shouts out to Travis Bean, uh, River Rouge High School. We created River Rouge Audio and Music Production. It's called Ramp. Built a studio in a school, complete lab with music production capabilities, where it's 125 kids that's making beats every day. Um, and it's amazing, by the way. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, getting I it, you that. know, I mean, getting the, getting the opportunity to come in and learn certain math and science concepts, be able to learn about self-efficacy through it, be able to learn about the iterative process through making beats every single day and learning different things every single day. So um, I took that and that experience, I, I had the ability to come to the college level and work with Upper Bound, which is a program that's federally funded to support kids in making decisions about college and supporting them through college. Um, and although, you know, my, in, my involvement in music production hasn't immediately impacted my program, that program per se, um, I always try to use this experience to support them. But being at the college level gave me the ability to seek my Ph.D. in urban education. I'm working on my Ph.D. in urban education and my focus is on what we call hip hop pedagogy. How is hip hop utilized as a lens in order to teach kids? Um, hip hop is 40 years old. And for us to have an ethnocentric viewpoint of it to say, oh, hip hop is not this or hip hop is just this or just that is ridiculous. Um, everything that I do as I study social theories and things within my classes, I always look at it through the scholarship that's involved in hip hop. Um, I just wrote a paper about um, neoliberalism and consequentialism in terms of the ends justifying the means. And um, I looked at it through the lens of Jay-Z. Jay-Z is a perfect example of that as he talked about being a drug dealer and being a, being a drug dealer because he had to make ends meet and being a drug dealer as a result of the circumstances involving what was going on in his neighborhood, which was crafted through neoliberalism and people profiteering from the suffering of others. So saying all that to say, um, I'm finally in a place where I've been able to blend everything. Being an administrator has taught me about, again, being strategic and saying, this is what I want. This is what I don't want. Um, this is what I want to accomplish. This I, I, I've learned how to say no to a certain degree. And then um, again, the, uh, and I'll, I'll just be honest with you, being an administrator and doing the things that I did in education doesn't it has afforded me the ability to really focus on making music and not have to focus on, oh, I need this to survive. Oh, this is my way out. Oh, this is my, you know, so I'm able to just have fun with it, do it at my leisure, put out projects on a yearly basis. I put out me and my, I put out a project every year. My team puts out a project at least every year. And then they put out their own independent projects and I may work with them on it. I may not work with them on it, but it's, so it's all still, I still get the same joy of that fun of just um, making music because I love it. Yeah. I, I love that. I love that you've been able to, to bring all those things together. I, I think what you're doing really uh, is such important work, especially your work that you did, you know, there at the, um, at the high school and building that audio lab and uh, you know, your, your studies and your take, uh, on, on these things is really refreshing. I think it's it's good stuff. I know people would be interested in, in reading uh, some of your work at some point. So I don't know is that is that is that stuff going to see some some published light of day before too long? Or we do we get to look forward to that? Absolutely. Um, I've done a variety of um, work through class, and I always go into doing it with the intent of potentially building it out. And publishing it. Um, the unfortunate truth, and you know, I hope my professor is not watching this, but um, <laughs> I don't. I don't have the privilege and the luxury to be able to really build out and e extract every idea that I have 
to be able to, well, I think they would be happy with it because they would have to read it, but they give me parameters in terms of, you know, really focusing in on this or focusing on that. And what I've been able to do is I, I have to kind of hold myself back, you know, um, because I want to go so deep and so, so into it. Um, I've written papers about how one of the, one of the papers I'm most happy about, hold on real quick. One of the papers that I'm most happy about is how, um, Goody Mob's album in the 90s, Soul Food, was used to, um, it was it was their critique of housing and crime policies in 1990s Atlanta. So Atlanta was in the process of going through gentrification, trying to get the 96 Olympics, plus it's in the South, plus, you know, it, 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 it was dealing with extreme poverty. And what they did was they used their experience and their platform to critique it but it would never be spoken about as a critique because it's rap and people kind of fundamentally think rap is not intellectual. So um, those are the kind of things that I'm interested in exposing, really taking what people already know and saying, Hey, look at it from this angle. It's a little bit different than you think it is. So, yeah. I think, I think that's great. And, and really, you know, when you say, when you, when you say, you know, hip hop is, is, is 40 years old. I can remember a time when, you know, hip hop was, you know, like another, you know, we could pick any musical genre and go back in time and, you know, whether it was rock and roll or blue, you know, early blues, early R&B, anything like that. When it came around, there were definitely people saying, oh, that's just a fad. That's never going to catch on. That's just, that's just the flavor, you know, and I remember being a kid and listening to, to some early hip hop and, and really getting into it back then as a kid like you. I never got into the recording end of it or, or into the genre myself, but as a fan, I was definitely a fan. Yeah. Um, but, but to be sitting here, you know, 40 years later and realizing uh, it's, it's one of the most, if not the most popular uh, music art form in the world. And oh, it's the most, and, and it's the most stream by far yeah. the most. And yeah. to say, but, but, but to say that it's not intellectual is it, it, and it doesn't have, a lens to offer um i think you know that's unfortunate and mm -hmm. but work that you're doing is is you know important to change that right to change that I, absolutely idea. absolutely i'm right now i'm studying um how hip-hop went global so in that process i'm studying how culture is spread and what i'm finding is um hip-hop one thing that that i that i that i believe is that hip hop and the growth of technology were in hand to hand. So as you know, hip hop fundamentally responds, it creates technology or it creates innovation. It create it steadily creates innovation based on the technology in front of it. And then the market tries to catch up to it over and over. Um, when hip hop started, um, it was somebody with a microphone and two turntables. And if you know anything about turntables, they weren't really separate components. They were built into, you know, these massive, these, you know, stereos that had eight tracks and radio and this, that, and the third giant. They, they were all in our parents' basements. And when hip hop came around, hip hop impacted, um, you know, impacted uh, turntables. Then it impacted speaker systems in cars. Then it impacted the drum machines. Then it impacted, you know, over and over and over and over. And it, and now it's impacting streaming services and things that we're doing on the internet. And I think if anything, just like, um, and I hope I'm, I'm answering your question, but um, it continues to innovate over and over. I mean, if you look at the last five weeks that we've been on, on um, uh, quarantine, so to speak, um, hip hop has continued to progress. You know, you had a DJ on the internet a couple weeks ago that had 250,000 people watching his stream. You know, yeah. um, you have producers that are actively doing projects. One of the, the sweet things that's happening right now, I got to remember his name, but um, he's doing a thing where he's giving, it's kind of like the Dirty 30, and we can talk about that too, but he's giving producers a sample to chop and then matching them with MCs and the MCs have to take the beats and the MCs got to record on the beat and make a video out of it. That is, that's brilliant. It's innovative. And yeah, so um, hip hop is founded in innovation. Um, 
and it just it just adds so much in my opinion it just adds so much to the human experience but like i said i think the reason primarily the reason that it's been undermined in this country is because it was something that was exclusively created by poor people in the hood um black and brown people and um over time it got commercialized and now you know the global community is able to kind of pick and choose what it wants to to take from it and use as their own be it them looking for social justice be it them looking for something that just um is just youth culture or whatever so um it just continues to innovate yeah so yesterday we had a good conversation on the phone rod and um um you know like you hip-hop and embody, you embody hip-hop in so many different ways um can you speak to how hip-hop is viewed around the world and how it's utilized in like revolutionary fa you know facets um one of the examples that we talked about eric was um there was a video i ran into that was a bunch of chechnyan chechnyan rebels and it was a rap song and if you listen to it it sounded like a mob deep song and in the lyrics they were talking about um you know we want to start we, we want to save our people we want to um you know we're fighting for our freedom this that and the third and it really reminded me about the fact that you know there is a lot of hip-hop that is that has been created over the history of hip-hop about the liberation of people um it doesn't get it's not as commercially viable because everybody doesn't want to hear it so it doesn't get as much attention from companies it doesn't get as much attention from the machine in a lot of situations unless it's done in a way that is both can be both comfortable for the machine and it speaks to people i, I think when you look at kendrick lamar um to pimp a butterfly to me to pimp a butterfly um, the album is probably the best album that's come out in the first 20 years of the 20th, 21st century because it was very, it had very strong political and social discussion while it was still very palatable to the market. And it was all, it almost like hit the sweet spot. Um, so for people around the world, um, you know, one thing about America is we cre create anti heroes. The anti-hero is a very Amer it's not a, an American construction, but when you think about people who are heroes in American lore and American heritage, they're always anti-heroes like Billy the Kid, like Tony Soprano, like Tupac Shakur, you know, and, you know, they were people who were staunchly independent and they didn't give a damn about certain things. So following that same model is something that's attractive to people who are being oppressed and people who feel as though and for some reason. I mean, in some ways, we all believe that there's somebody that is doing us wrong and it feeds it feeds a certain part of the of, of the human condition to have somebody who's willing to fight for theirs. And I think that's one of the things that hip hop really brought to the forefront. Um, and it takes a lot of different forms. And, and I think people at here, it, hip hop has something for everybody. For some people, it's the technology piece. For some people, it's the dance piece. For some people, it's the um the intellectualism that's involved in the lyrics for some people is the beat for some people is the way the the dress the art the style um it's all attached so that's what i'm finding in my studies and um i'm looking forward to interact i i, I get an opportunity to interact with people from around the world based around hip-hop uh, and there's all these different sub genres and cultures that's involved um, people who dig for records all over the world, people who break dance all over the world. And the, the beautiful thing for me is that I've really been taken in by a group of scholars who have done doctoral work about hip hop and they all bring their own independent skill set to the conversation. It's and it's it's brilliant to have these conversations with them. Yeah. I really like how you bring up like how Kendrick, you know, um has a lot of good content, meaningful content about society, but then also is very palatable to the industry. That's something that I've been working and striving to for my music the whole time I've been making music is trying to make something that's palatable for the you know mainstream industry, but also has some good content and good messages um, right. hidden in there. Um, so I really like that you brought that up. We have a question from one of our viewers. Darren mm -hmm. Weaver is wondering, where do you see rap and hip hop heading in the future? Um, it's I, I think that it's, it's 
so the hip hop generation was born between 1967 and, and 1984. So people who were born of hip hop and really envelop the culture and i'm not talking about a style of dress i'm not talking about the way you talk but it's a mindset and an attitude that is very independent that is um very strong you know these people from the hip-hop generation are moving into government people from the generation are becoming you know your late 30s 40 something and up so um i think for me, it is to a certain degree, um, you know, as you see more hip hop people being able to move into positions of power, I do think that there may there there will hopefully be more voices that can undo some of the inequity and inequality that we see in society. I also think that um, just from a musical sense where it's going, um, there's a lot of variety and it's really becoming on demand. Um, there is an entire school of people who listen to Griselda Records that is across age ranges and across ethnicities and everything. And there's a, a group that completely doesn't deal with them. So everything is on demand uh, with streaming and Spotify and playlisting and everything. You really can go out there and you can literally find exactly what you want. Um, I think it always goes in cycles. Um, I think that there will I think that youth hip hop, when it's based around youth culture, it always is it's wave jumping. It's always wave jumping. It's, you know, this person has a hot song and then this person doesn't have a hot song. And now we're going to move on to the next person. Yeah. Um, but in the same token, um, people have their core, people have their audience and they can stick with them. I just look at how um, the baby, um, the baby just dropped the album and people don't like it. And the baby was the hottest thing on the planet six months ago. Well, he's getting um, those views though, man. Like people might not oh, like yeah. it, but he's going hard with the with the views. He was like number one on trending the other day. Yeah, yeah. And so there's these competing conversations, you know, about the quality of the music versus the attention you're getting for the music. So um, of course, you know, it's it's difficult for him to just not have the attention he was getting, especially in lieu of if people are saying I don't like it, it's whack. It's people that's what that's going to be willing to find out for themselves. And it's some people that's going to believe it just because. So music is increasingly becoming a game about attention. Um, and for me, I was never a person that sought attention in my personal life or otherwise. So um, I have a difficult time and the people who are like me have a difficult time kind of um, being able to buy into that ethic being at the forefront as opposed to what you can do on the mic or what you can do with the beats. Um, so I think that's important. I think even now with the quarantine element, um, and I know I keep calling that and, I, and I'm timing this that way, but, but, um, I think social media is becoming even more powerful in the last month than it was before, oh, yeah. um, because this is the way that people are connecting. It, it is, you know, it's, it's the bane of my existence. The only thing I do is really, I, I only talk about music and talk about sports with people. Um, but other than that, I kind of keep the conversation, um, you know, I keep, I, I just keep it about that. I'm not really about saying here, Hey, listen to my music, you know, cause I know it's 50,000 people doing that. It's 40,000 songs uploaded to Spotify every day. So I guess what I would say, if he is a musician, make himself distinct, but have something to say, especially to the people who are around you, especially to the people that's close to you. Because um, those are the people who are going to make the difference for you. Um, there's going to be wave, jump, especially if you're a young artist and you're just jumping on the same, trying to make the same beats and the same, you know what I'm saying, type stuff everybody else is, you know, that come and go. But when you really have something to say and it really makes connections with people, that's when you really can do something significant. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, you know, how about the, the music industry in general? Um, you know, do you have any sense of, of where that's heading in the future? Um, you know what? I think um, there's a there's a how could I say this? I think record labels are dissipating. I think people are distributing themselves. I think people are becoming even even more self-sufficient than they used to. 
Um, I think that um, you have to really be strategic if you choose to jump into a major label situation uh, because you have the ability to, to build your own brand and everything by yourself. And we see it happening over and over and over and over. Um, you know, I have a great friend, shouts out to Sam Crawford, um, who works with the Orchard. He's from, uh, he, he's from Pontiac. And he really talks about frequently being self-sufficient and not having to depend on other entities in order to pay you, to publicize you, to market you or anything. Um, because those people who are really doing it, it's not the old days where, you know, Max creates a demo and Atlantic Records happens to see a video and comes to get it. Um, I'm sorry, where where they come and get him. Um, and I'm gonna have to step off here for one quick second. But it's not a situation where, um, you know, you make a demo and you get signed. You know, if you got 500,000 followers, people gonna start calling you. If you got, you know, a video that's that's going viral, people will call it, follow you. That's why people like Bad Barbie get record deals. People like, you know, I mean, no disrespect, you know, I'm sure they work hard, but that's why you have people who are reality stars that's making music. You know, shots out to Cardi B, No, obviously no shade at all, but a large part of her success, she worked her butt off, but a large part of her success came along with the fact that she got the exposure from being on a reality show. And um, she used that, but she used that platform for what it was supposed to be. She really cemented herself in the game. Um, I have to run upstairs real quick, guys. If you could give me literally one minute. I know this is the downfall of live TV, but I got to run outside real quick. Okay. <laughs> so I'll be good. right back. That's all right. Yeah. I, I think Rod makes some good points. Uh, really, you know, I love, I love hearing him talk uh, about the scene and about, uh, about, everything that he's working on. Um, and this is why, you know, having him as part of our advisory board is, is amazing because he brings such a, just a rich background of experience, uh, both, you know, academic and, you know, obviously with the music itself, it just really um, informs a lot of decisions that we uh, have made at Grove since being involved with him. Yeah, absolutely. He's he's an awesome person to have on the team. Um, you know, do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, Grove and what Grove is trying to do and, um, you know, kind of like the intro a little bit? Yeah, so, uh, you know, the, the the big thing, I mean, we started we started working on Grove Studios, gosh, I what, three, four, four years ago, even um, conceptually speaking. Right, Eric, we we really saw the. Uh, we thought we could do a music rehearsal studio um, best. And we, and we had a lot of ideas at the beginning, but um, you know, we did envision this more professional workspace. I mean, a lot of us have experienced some uh, less savory environments to, you know, rehearse and practice in. And, you know, we're, in the mom's basement <laughs> yeah i mean and nothing no, you're right mom's basement eric's basement any garage a garage we spent we spent an entire uh winter in the garage of a an old industrial building with like five space heaters <laughs> and it still never got past like maybe 55 degrees in there with the space heaters and we all had experiences like that um and that was part of it. What it what informed, you know, starting Grove Studios, and we met Eric uh, Breck early on too, um, as an architect, and we also knew he was a musician through a Guitar Center connection. But uh, working with Breck, we we started developing what what a physical location would look like, and we eventually came into the shipping container idea, uh, Breck specializes in shipping container construction as an architect and there are a lot of reasons you would build uh, from shipping containers from a sustainability standpoint uh, from a cost perspective to in order to keep costs low because that was one of the things we felt was important about the studio space was that we wanted to build something nice but we wanted to also make sure it was accessible um, to anyone particularly people that are just getting started because you guys all know right here that, you know, the cost of the equipment and some, and, and the gear can be 
a barrier to, to, you know, getting started. And we felt strongly about uh, not just providing a, a space with a bunch of rooms that people can dump their stuff in and then let it sit there when they're not using it. But we wanted a purpose built space that, that did backline things and allowed people to come in um, with, you know, I mean, our production room has a, you know, all, everything you need except for the computer. You bring your computer in and you can, you can get to work in a, a, a more professional environment. Um, yeah. And uh, Breck was talking about, you know, how shipping containers, they just pile up, right? When they're, when they're, when no one's using them, um, yep. you know, they're not really used for anything. Yeah. There's about a million and a half shipping containers sh- sitting in uh, shipping yards all around the country. And as you know, we buy more goods from China and, and everywhere else, the, the shipping containers don't go back and get refilled with goods. It's more expensive to ship them back empty than it is to just leave them here. So from a building materials standpoint, it's a no brainer. And then of course, you know, they're, Breck's gonna tell me I'm probably wrong. I, it's like some kind of quarter inch thick steel. I mean, it's a, a thick steel. I mean, these things are hurricane proof, uh, you know, um, tornado proof, whatever else. I mean, they're, uh, he describes them as Legos, big Legos, because they can be stacked. Uh, and, you know, we can build with shipping containers in just about any environment in a, a denser urban environment. We can, we can stack them with a, an elevator, you know, shaft going up to, to, to a top floor. Um, they can be put inside of uh, old warehouse buildings. They can be, they don't have to be inside of a building. They can be outside. So they're really flexible. Um, and we just, our, our vision is, is hundreds of locations around the country providing a service for, for people that want to, you know, make music in any genre. Right. And I think the most important part of it is not that just we're providing space and the tools for people to, you know, to, to make music, but also the opportunity to create that content and get their voice out into the world, right? Make it accessible yeah. to literally anyone, someone, you know, from pro- the professional level all the way down to the, you know, the very beginner. And um, Rod's back in the room with us now. So I think that, like, that ties well into the idea of hip hop being such a literal art form that, you know, it's just, it's accessible to anyone. So what we're doing at Grove Studios, can I get on that, you know, that we're just trying to create that accessibility to literally anyone, right? Sounds good to me. Thank you, fellas. I, I had a minor crisis I had to address outside. Really? But I'm oh, dead. Good. Hope Sorry. everything's okay. Everything is well. Thank you. <laughs> hey, can you talk to us a little bit about like the double negative people? Uh, I see you rocking the merch. Um, what's that all? So um, double negative people was the production company that myself and Mike Mosley started um, as well as uh, a few artists. Um, Eli to Don, Gino, Mr. Pedro way back in the mid two thousands. And what ended up happening was they ended up just turning into a conglomerate of different entities that work together. Um, And we still operate in terms of a brain trust to work on projects, talk about projects. Double negative people has been kind of principally um, the executive body behind a lot of the work that I've done up, you know, to the last couple of years. Um, I've been doing recent projects under the window of, um, my own kind of production company, the things that I've been working on immediately, um, invisible audio, but still double negative people. Um, Vietnam is double negative people. Uh, that's a group that we've been working with to cultivate a sound. Um, you know, Mike notes myself, a lot of down, we're all still involved and engaged in it, but um, we're all doing a lot of different things at the same time, but that's kind of who we are. Yeah, that's cool. I like, you know, double negative, two negatives makes a positive. Um, Absolutely. You know, do you guys focus on like bringing a positive uh, message with your music or is that where you guys came up with the idea? Yeah, it was. Um, 
I was always, so I was the, the whole time we were making music. Um, you know, I've always been involved in school. So I was always kind of, I hate to say hamstrung to a point to make sure that everything that the, all the things that I was associated with could be bountiful for my kids. Because at the end of the day, I couldn't be a teacher or whatever. And then be talking reckless on records. Like it just didn't line up. Now I'm, you know, being more of a, um, now that I understand a little bit more about, um, how music is assembled, I'm kind of in a position where I can allow people to kind of around me, they can say whatever they want to say, you know? Um, and they said what they wanted to say back in the day too. Don't get me wrong, but I was always, I've always been a relatively positive individual when it came to making music. So, um, yeah, double negative was I don't I don't even remember the exact story of how it started, but that's what we called ourselves was double negative. First, it was double negative, And we didn't want to get confused with the special effects company who does movies. So we added the people because the people are important. Yeah. And, and I, so I love that the your logo, too. It's so so simple, but so dope. You know? Yep. Yeah. So. As far as like, you know, you're, you've done so many production projects over the years. Mm. Um, what are some of the projects that you've done that stand out the most to you? Um, personally, I think the three projects. Um, wow. So a couple of things. So the professional development series is three albums that's on my Spotify. That is a compilation of beats that were made over the course of the pre the preceding year for, for a while I was working with an organization called computer music Academy, um, led by shots out to Tashira say, um, here in Michigan, um, where he challenged people to make beats on a weekly basis. So I was, while I was in the process of learning how, relearning how to make beats, because I stopped making music between 2007 and 2012. So in the process of me relearning it, I ran across Computer Music Academy and got involved where he was giving challenges out on a weekly basis. And what I found was I was getting better and better and better and better and better to the point where I started putting out projects. So I put out a pro, you know, I, I was making all of this music, making all of this music. And then, you know, and I had put out albums before I stopped making music. So then I put one out in 2016, Professional Development of Volume 1. Volume 2 was 17. Volume 3 was 18. And then I lost my father in 2018. And Professional Development was supposed to be kind of like a trilogy. Um, and so I said, the next album I make, if I make one, is going to be a little bit different. So that album was called At the End of the Day. And that album really allowed me to explore a really dark place that I was in after I lost my father. Times was changing. I'm getting older, you know. Um, so that album means a lot to me. The Dirty Old Man Projects do. Um, every Again, this, is the this was the fourth year that we've done a, a summer retreat. And the last three years, the music that came out of those retreats, I executive produced and turned into albums. We had Chicago Fire, which was from when we went to Chicago. We had an album called Fucking Um. um and let me explain that. So there's a guy named RTO Beats that's in our group. And we do these weekly hangouts and chats. And he always says, uh, uh, fucking, uh, uh. So we went to San Francisco where he lives. And um, shouts out to RTO Beats. Um, we went out to where he lives. So we named the project after something that he always says. So that's called fucking um, um, that's on Spotify under <laughs> Dirty Old Man. And then this one, East Grand, I think this probably was the one that I was the most proud of because the chemistry was there. Um, every song just about I, I really utilized all of the resources that I had around me or most of the resources I had around me. Um to make this record um the guys they they bought music um you know they they bring all their equipment we did a loft on east grand boulevard um we set up a mic booth and all i did was engineer for like four days straight we recorded a bunch of music while we were there um they did everything that they could and then they allowed me to come back to them and say hey i want to do this i want to do that i want to try this i want to add this i want to add rick coughlin on guitar I want to take your beat and I want to, I want to change the drums. I want to do this. I want to do that. And, um, 
you know, I took, so we, we did the retreat in July and we put the album out last in February. So, um, that's probably the one that I'm most proud of because I really took, it was really like the vision that I had from the beginning of what this looks like. And I was able to bring it to fruition because I just, I've made a lot of friends and, um, people have really been supportive of it. And, and that, that record, you know, it, I heard little bits and pieces along the way. I think, uh, you know, just when you at the studio sharing some stuff with us, but it really turned out amazing. It, it, it's on, it's on constant rotation for me. Um, excellent. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's so, excellent. it's just got this classic vibe to it. Um, I'm just, it's like every time I listen to it again, I'm getting more out of it every time. I love that you started the whole thing out with uh, some live recording from the Dirty 30 that happened over that when those guys were in town. And yeah. honestly, that's that's I want to talk about the Dirty 30 for a minute. because That's honestly one of the most incredible events that I've ever been able to be a part of. And that one was special because all of those guys from around the country were in town. Um mm -hmm. You know, you're, you, this is your concept, the Dirty 30, and, and um, I really look forward to us getting back into it. But, but yeah. where did it come from? Where, where, did the, where did this idea come from? And So, long story short, um, one of the things that we did in Computer Music Academy was we did these things called sample mutilations where we took a sample and we all had to make a beat out of it. And I found that, you know, you get 10, 15 producers – everybody's beat is going to sound different and it's a beautiful thing. And so um, I took a quantitative analysis class and I had an opportunity to send out a survey to producers and like, you know, what are, what kind of work patterns do you have? What kind of, what's your relationship with, how do you learn? How do you this? How do you that? And one of the things that I found in, in the survey and the data was, um, they don't get a lot of opportunities to uh, collaborate without it being a competitive environment. Like it's beat, it's plenty of beat battles and everything. Shouts out to everybody that do beat battles. I mean, we seeing them crazy. Um, shouts out to the beat battle league, Uncle P, um, everybody who's involved in that too. And I said, you know what? I said maybe we could try to do something that's um, a little bit different. It's still a challenge because. You know, if you give me enough time, if I know I got a beat battle coming in a month, I'm going to sit up for the month if I'm really trying to win and I'm going to make every single beat an absolute killer. I said, let's take the preset stuff out of it and let's put you in a room for a predetermined amount of time and let's see what you do. You know what I'm saying? Let's see how your workflow is, you know, because a lot of the producers talk frequently about the importance of workflow. And that's one of the reasons that they get stuck on one piece of equipment and they stick with it for so long. I stuck with Cubase since I stuck with Cubase in innuendo since 2004 because I had to workflow down so well. And it, it was a difficult paradigm shift for me. So saying all that to say, Let's put you in a room with your mobile gear, because at this time, you know, you had NPC lives and more mobile people producing on laptops, Fruity Loops, this, that, and a third. Let's put you in a room and let's give everybody a sample. And then you got to make you got to make a beat right now. Um, in 30 we did, minutes. We, yep. In 30 minutes. And we yeah. called it the Dirty 30, you know, um, and we did it five times in Ipsy at 734 Bruin. Shout out to 734 Bruin. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Brian, Hannah, all of them. Um, and it went extremely well. You know, we would we started with two or three producers. Then we would end up having nine producers. Then we had 17 producers. Then we had 11. So um, and it just got better and better and better. And then it got cold and people got busy. So, you know, our interest was in bringing it back as it started to warm up, my hope would have been um, to plan it for April before the college kids went home. But, you know, it is what yeah. it is. So what we've talked about is bringing it back in an online setting. We're still working out details to make it happen. Um, and my hope is to get something up by early May where we can engage with producers and get producers back on board and, and have fun with it because it, it is, it's a lot of fun and it's a great, 
you know, producers frequently talk about, they don't get the opportunity to collaborate and communicate um, and network with other producers, you know, through um, the Dirty 30, I've been able to connect with True Classic. I've been able to connect with J Fab from the Olympics. I've been able to connect with um, um, Kamiko from who works with the Olympics. Um, all of those, you know, and, and it's really a fantastic environment to be in amongst producers when it's a situation that's all about growth. It's all about fun. Um, you know, even the B battles and everything, it's always a fantastic environment. So um, if I'm able to continue to contribute to that, I will. And I, I plan on doing so. That's dope. Uh, you mentioned like True Classic. I know I just saw True Classic tune in. So shout out to True Classic. Also, you mentioned Uncle P, you know, huge, huge DJ and, and person in the Detroit hip hop scene. He Absolutely. tuned in as well. So shout out Uncle P. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's dope to have you with us, man. Absolutely. I, I Uncle P is the, is, is the, the OG. You know, um, I give him 100 percent credit. Um, he's been there for me ever since I was at, you know, working with Ramp. He came to the school. He's helped us. Uh, shout out to Brandon Scarber, um, who I work closely with, too. Um, those guys have shown me a lot, a lot of love. And I'm not from the D. And, you know, I've worked in the D for a long time, but um, they've shown me a great deal of love. And, and like I said, it's, it's a culture and being a part of it, you know, feeling like, um, you know, people are willing to support you is a great thing. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, Uncle P is a big part of that culture in Detroit of bringing people together and trying to put people on. You know, mm -hmm. I know he put me on. Uh, he's the only reason I performed at uh, St. Andrews. I, I was able to perform on, you know, the Underground Hip Hop Awards in Detroit. So he's he's always trying to help out artists. Yep. That's super dope. Um, you know, you're talking about producing a little bit. Have you do you have any specific like production or mixing tips that have really like helped get your game to the next level that you'd be able to share? Absolutely. Um, production. I'll just be really simple. I mean, I'll just be kind of broad, but production, keep it simple. Um, you know, and be unique. Um, you don't have to walk into it and know what you are looking for and just kind of let the music lead you. But um, especially when you're doing, when you're producing music that has um, vocals, a vocalist on it, you know, really focus on just trying to be really simple and trying to support them through your mix, your, your decisions. Um, also, you know, this is a perfect opportunity for all producers to get a better grasp of musical theory. Um, if you got a MIDI keyboard, and a laptop and you got YouTube, you can learn how to play the piano and you can learn how to do scales. You can learn how to do finger work and all that. I'm not great at it. Like I said, I just kind of know what works. I know how to make the equipment work for me, but you know, you can see in the bed. Yeah. It, wait, I'm backwards. You can see my daughter's piano back here. My daughter is learning how to play the piano slowly, but surely. And I'm sitting up here right with her trying to, you know, just, just trying to make sure I learn musical theory is always a great help. And truth be told, whether you are involved in battling, whether you're involved in the actual production of beats, it makes a difference. Shout outs to people like Chris Wells, um, you know, Street Gang. Um, the musical theory is evident. And so it gives them another, um, it gives them another tier of skill involved in making beats. As far as mixing, um, again, the importance of uh, game staging is really important in terms of not having everything so loud when you start mixing, uh, mixing in mono. Um, so you can really get a grasp on what, you know, where your spacing is. Um, a lot of my mixing and a lot of my EQing first, the first thing I do is repair um, and balance. I, I repair and then I try to balance things across the EQ, the, the EQ spectrum uh, by enhancing certain elements. Um, YouTube is your friend. Every time you watch a video about learning how to do something specific, you pick up two or three things that you didn't know. Um, also, you know, being very weary of, I mean, being very aware of how loud you are. Um, I master too. So, you know, as, as a mastering engineer, um, I'm very sensitive to when people send me, 
uh, what me and my friends call snicker bar waves, where your wave look like a snicker bar as opposed to having some, you know, preserving some dynamic energy. Get some dynamics, yeah. Yeah, you know, preserving some dynamic energy where I can, you know, I may fatten it a little bit, um, pause, but um, at the end of the day, I can make, you know, I can make it as loud as you want it to be, but when I have to do what I have to do, and it's that it's 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 ridiculous like that. Then it's harder for me to really um, augment what you've already done. Um, and then mixing is uh, the the one thing I always say is mixing is an art and a science. If if me, you, Taylor Green Shields, um, Stephen Galletly, Lou Picasso, shout out Stephen, he's a man. Um, my man from Tracksiders. If we all got the same joint to mix, if we all got the same stems every song would be different. Every song would sound different. So, you know, even though as a mix engineer, everybody's song is not your place. It's not necessarily your place to say, oh, this is what I'm going to do to make it a Rod Wallace mix. You know, no, your job is to augment what they have given you. Now, there are certain things that you can do. Everybody has signatures within their mix, but you got to keep in mind and stay focused on what the client want. If you are the client, you know that the difference between a good song and a great song is in the mix. It is. I I think that's super accurate. It Um, is. And if, let me say this too, let me say this too, because it's Mm -hmm. a lot of people who mix lo-fi. If that's your intent, that's fine too. You know, so your mix can be grainy and upset and this, that, and the third, if that's your intent. But if you do something in that intent wrong, then it's not going to translate as much. And I'll just leave it at that. (laughs) <laughs> no, that's a great. It's a great point. Um, I, I mean, you're the, the. I guess the example of your your workflow and everything else in terms of just mixing and mastering was the last project with the Dirty Old Men, right? East, right. East Grand, um, and we'll post a link to that in the chat and uh, follow up after after the interview. Uh, but the latest project that uh, you know, Rod uh, mixed and mastered and and uh, performed on. It's called East Grand. It's by the Dirty Old Men. Uh, it's on all platforms. Um, your SoundCloud, uh, Spotify, you name it. Uh, Apple Music. It's it's there. It's a, it's an incredible record. Uh, it it's you should go listen to it right now. Right after Absolutely. this interview, <laughs> you should. Fact, you should. Matter of fact, you should stream it on all your devices and leave it on repeat for there about a go. day. <laughs> and and Rod spitting bars on there too. It's not just the production, not just yep. the mixing and mastering. He's got them fire bars on there. You got to check it out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Rod you. is Rod is. You're an incredible talent, man. And we're so lucky to to have you as a part of the team. Um, we're really super grateful that you spent the time. I know taking a couple blocks out of your your Sunday. You got kids and everything else, and. Uh, we really appreciate it, man. It's so good to see your face. Um, we're, we're all very fortunate. We get to talk to you uh, really often. Uh, we're looking forward to getting things started back up at Grove Studios, man. And uh, like I said earlier, um, Rod is really leading our educational efforts and outreach. And um, we have some exciting stuff coming up mm-hmm. in terms of uh, DJ classes and production classes that we're going to be offering at the studio under uh, the direction of of rod and and uh it's it's an amazing thing man thank you so much um real quick though uh we know a lot's uncertain right now but outside of what i just talked about what what do you have coming up in the year and beyond like what what projects can you talk about um that you're going to do next and uh you know the outside of the grove studios thing but uh maybe some other things you have going on well, um, I am working on a solo project. Well, not a solo project. I'm working on a project um, with a producer from Ipsy called um, JB Swift, um, where I'm mostly rapping um, and not trying to do everything like normal. Um, just a small EP. My hope is to have it out by the end of May. Um I have that, uh, Dirty Old Men, um, they're continuing to work on different projects individually. Um, hopefully, you know, we, we may not be able to do our retreat this year, which happens in July. 
every every year. But I know I think that we'll at least do another record together. Um, and other than that, you know, my focus at this point is going to be on, you know, what I do involving this programming, um, you know, with Grove Studios, some of the other organizations that I'm engaged with and really build out um, what you know, my next steps are from that perspective. Um, you know, I think that the the situation that we're in kind of put everything in perspective for me about how important, how, you know, you, I hear, you know, I hear frequently about why, you know, the things that I'm doing, they have a little, they have weight and they're important, but I think being in this situation really drove home to me how important it is for me to, to, to actively serve people. So it's not like I'm leaving music behind or whatever, but, I really want to make sure that um, the music and my walk of service line up. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time over the summer really trying to focus on that walk. So um, we'll see what happens. Well, I, I, that's amazing, man. I, I know I can speak for all of us that we, we are uh, just in awe of all the things that you do and, and the service aspect that you walk in your life, man. It's uh it's inspiring and we hope that it inspires other people to do the same thing. Um, and I think that's, that's a big part of what we've, we've tried to do with Grove is to, you know, we talk about hundreds of locations and well, we started here in Ipsy for a reason. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been here for 25 years. I love this community in this town. It's a special place, man. It really is a special place. And yep. we're all fortunate to be, to be here. And, and yes, we have our, our problems and our issues like any city community does, but I think uh, we're trying to be out there and doing positive things. You certainly are, Rod. And uh, thanks for coming on today. Eric, Max, uh, thank you for being here. You guys want to say any last words before we let this man go? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just thank you so much, you know, for coming on. Um, you're you're a true inspiration for all uh, of us, like hip hop artists from the area, you know, with your quality and your message and everything that you bring to the table as far as connection and educating and, and everything. You're a real true inspiration, man. So thank you so much for spending the time with us today. Thanks, Max. I appreciate that. I appreciate it, yeah. fellas. Yeah, sure. And I I think that, you know, I mean, the main thing that we're just focusing on here is the idea of community and everybody continually connecting. Um, so, I mean, keep your, keep, keep clicking on the Grove Sessions links, follow us at Grove Studios, follow Rod, follow Max, follow Rick, you know. Um, so until we can uh, get back together and have some events in our beautiful courtyard, over at uh, Grub Studios, 884 Railroad Street in Pittsburgh. You can catch us here. Yeah, and thank you so much uh, to everyone that tuned in. You know, we had tons of people tune in, tons of people throw some questions, throw some comments up. So thank you guys so much for, for engaging. Uh, and thank you, Uncle P, for shouting out Max Price in the comments. That's super dope, dude. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, so thank you guys for tuning in. Definitely. Uh, hey, once can again, I, let oh, me yeah. say this. Let me say this too, real quick. Um, you can follow Dirty Old Men um, on Instagram. Um, there, you can get a list of everybody who's involved. It's it's over fifteen of us, to be honest. Um, and um, you can catch us typically on Friday on Sunday nights. We do a podcast called Talk That Stuff, uh, where we talk about any number of things. And then also follow um, Digital Hustle Films. If you go to Digital Hustle Films on YouTube. Um, you can actually see a documentary about the Scratch Magazine retreat. Um, it's about two hours, um, beat making, a lot of fun. Um, and you actually can see the Dirty 30 um, that we had in July. Um, so that's Scratch, that's a digital hustle films. And just look for Dirty Old Men documentary. Amazing. I, I know we, I, I'm thinking as I'm listening to you talk, there's, there's so many things we probably didn't talk about too. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have to do this again. Uh, maybe we'll be in the same room together, maybe not, but I think we'd definitely like to have you back on and uh, talk more about what's what's happening. But yeah, once again, Rod Wallace, thank you so much. And uh, everybody have a great Sunday. Grove Studios, be Rod safe. Wallace, out. Peace. Peace.